Don in London, hello, and it's February the 27th, 2009. My video is all about recovery from addiction, Re uh, recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour, or both. My substance, alcohol, my behaviour, trying to be perfect, never so. Workaholic as well. Um, and probably uh, addicted to giving and being a part of, and included, and doing whatever you want me to do. All those things. And now, just gently, a day at a time, I'm learning how to be, how to be me and uh, receive bulletins on emails. So, what are these videos all about? Well, it's a way of me sharing experience, strength and hope and how a particular fellowship helps me keep sober a day at a time. And that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. It's not an organisation. It cannot fix anything. It's uh, a self-healing fellowship. And through self-healing, we share experience, strength and hope. And this is how the preamble goes for every meeting. There's a little card here I use. It, it's, it slows me into the moment of now, so I may concentrate on what I'm trying to do. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcohol alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is the desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that's the, the big message and the daily message, if you like, that a fellowship can help. <coughs> and I've been going through, through some testing times. Uh, I, I'm in recovery a day at a time from addiction and at the same time in sobriety because uh, normal things happen to normal people. I got type 1 diabetes and I got properly, properly diagnosed with clinical depression. So over the last few weeks I've been having to change my medication and the only way to do it is to stop some, uh, give some time and then start others. So this conundrum of going through the pain yet again of uh, very, very difficult times with depression and at the same time trying to get all the medicines right for the type 1 di diabetes management has not been easy and it continues and life is difficult and that's just the way it is but it feels today, this morning, that a, a small turning of a corner or a turning point seems to be a, a, achieved I feel a bit more level today and uh, it's been up and down. So, what am I doing here? Well, sharing the, uh, the literature of AA, like books like this, the Daily Reflections, which I'll refer to in a little while, the 12 Steps and 12 Traditions of AA, 12 ste Steps of Action to Live Life in a more, uh, I suppose, level and balanced way as we are unique authentic people we learn how work and how our balance can be achieved and uh, I don't know that it's ever always in balance there are ups and downs in every day and the, the, the gift is serenity knowing that uh, there's some things I can't change and some things I can normally my choices and as Bill sees it as well and there's a message in this one I want to share first so I don't lose the opportunity in this video and it's on page 39 it says dealing with resentment resentment is the number one offender it destroys more alcoholics than anything else from it stem all forms of spiritual disease for we have, have been not only mentally and physically ill we have also been spiritually ill when our spiritual malady is overcome we straighten out mentally and physically in dealing with our resentments we set them on paper we listed people, institutions or principles with, with whom we were angry. We asked ourselves, why were we angry? In most cases, it was found that our self-esteem, our pocketbooks, our ambitions, our personal relationships, including sex, were hurt or threatened. The most heated bit of, a letter, the most heated bit of letter writing can be a wonderful safety valve, providing the wastebasket is somewhere nearby. And you know what? Resentments are the number one offender. Because we're looking for blame, how can we blame our particular malady on either ourselves or other people? And the simple answer is we cannot. And the problem with alcoholism is there are so many people with stigma about it, those who have it, so there is a, a resentment against oneself, and then a resentment about the history of living, our own living. 
and the people and how they've impacted on us, that we can have resentments about everything. And we can't stop this malady from taking us over. So the malady of alcoholism is certainly uh, rooted in resentment. Once we've got it, we th think or feel we ought to be able to blame either ourselves or other people. And the r real truth of a disease over which we have no control and we are powerless is that we definitely are powerless. Powerless over people, places, things. And if we start to get to understand that this malady can be resolved on a daily basis, we can stay in recovery, then we are in a better place, in a better situation. So resentments, we can all have them about anything and everything. And what I found gently over the, over the years is, uh, resent, resent not at our peril. And if we do resent, we do it at our peril because we're either disliking what we're doing or what other people are doing. And we take our eye off the ball. That is reality, and the, the true spiritual state for me is being able to see reality as it is. And in a funny way, I was lucky uh, getting type 1 diabetes in recovery, uh, not associated with my drinking, and I've, I've checked it out many times, and people say, no, if you were going to get uh, diabetes from your drinking, it would go type 2, then maybe type 1, but to get type 1 in, in my 50s, and most people get it either from birth or in their very young days, 20s or 30s maybe, certainly 20s. Uh, it's unusual for a character like me to get it, especially when my system was pretty much okay. So there we are. I don't have a resentment about that. I've lived long enough to get it, and I've lived long enough to understand that I have clinical depression too. And I know I've gone on about it a lot over the last month, but it's been important to do so, simply because it's impacting on my life in a big way. So February is also about the second step of this 12-step program and uh, I, need, I need to share it again and it goes like this, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Uh, what can we believe in? AA does not demand belief, 12 steps are only suggestions, importance of an open mind, a variety of ways to faith, substitution of AA as a high power, plight of the disillusioned, roadblocks of indifference and prejudice lost faith found in AA, problems of intellectuality and self-sufficiency, defiance is an outstanding characteristic of alcoholics, step two is a rallying point to sanity and right relation to the God of your or my understanding. And it's uh, the gift, if you like, is not to be dogmatic about these things. And the gift also is not to resent how we are, but there is much to be done in accepting our situation. <coughs> Excuse me. Coming on to daily reflections, this one. For February the 27th, it says, a unique stability. Where does AA get its direction? These practical folk then read tradition too and learn that the sole authority in AA is a loving God as he may express himself in the group conscience. In other words, express himself through people to the good of living. The elder statesman is the one who sees wisdom of the group's decision, who holds no resentment, again that word resentment, over his reduced status, whose judgment fortified by considerable experience is sound and who is willing to sit quietly on the sidelines patiently awaiting developments. And it goes on to say here, so unique stability comes out of uh, the good and sometimes it takes a while for the good to come out. Into the fabric of recovery from alcoholism are woven the 12 steps and 12 traditions. As my recovery progressed I realised that the new mantle was tailor made for me. The elders of the group gently offered suggestions when change seemed impossible. Everyone's shared experiences became the substance for treasured friendships. I know that the fellowship is ready and equipped to aid each suffering alcoholic at all crossroads in life, wherever they happen to be, and me too. In a world beset by many problems, I find this assurance a unique stability. I cherish the gift of sobriety. I offer God my gratitude for the strength I receive in a fellowship that truly exists for the good of all members. And so true it is, and you know, I'm gratified that uh, it, it's not even a democracy, it's a fellowship, and that uh, the good of good conscience comes out eventually, and it can mean that change is very slow, uh, and that's a good thing, in my opinion, because we at least cherish every decision we make. So as I am able to, to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and resent not, and the wisdom to know the difference seems very appropriate today.